Well, while we are awaiting Ben Bernanke's, uh, King Ben Bernanke's proclamation on the economy and uh, whether silver is going to go up or down up upon his words, and this, by the time this video is out, he's going to already say whatever the hell he's going to say. I don't know if it's going to be anything stupendous, but probably not. Uh, I'm going to get into some of these facts that are not really published that much, but they're still facts on the economy. Now, first, before I say this, I want to preface this with this. You know, your attitude, innovation, innovation is a big thing. And uh, working outside the system, actually, a little bit, too, sometimes is where it can actually overcome adversity. And if you actually are going to always think about the negative and the situation's hopeless, you know, you're going to lose out. So I'm going to present these bad news facts, but, you know, keep that in mind because uh, this is actually reality and uh, you don't want to be like an ostrich and uh, say things are rosy and they're not. You know, that's the other thing, too. But you don't want to have a bad attitude. And actually, after this, I'm going to put, I'm not going to give all these facts because it's too long, but after this, I'm going to put a little moral of a story out there, a little story, and um, you could see where attitude makes major difference. Now, first off... Um, there's like all these economic facts that they say from the government, you know, they see the non-farm payrolls, this is happening, that's happening, the primary manufacturing index, and now these are other statistics, and these are real statistics, and it's not like, you know, you know, the gambling and prostitution index or the garbage index and stuff, these are actually real statistics, and they really indicate what's going on. Uh, most people... Um, they say that there's actually, you know, they say the unemployment rate is actually at, say, 7%, but actually we're at an all-time record high of 102 million working-age Americans that do not have a job. Even though, you see, the number of Americans that do not have a job that are of working age has actually increased, even though they're saying the unemployment rate has decreased, and that's because they consider people that are unemployed a long time to be off, you know, not looking for a job. They're not job seekers. That's how they manipulate those uh, numbers. So the actually unemployment rate is actually higher. And because of the lack of jobs, there's an all-time record uh, high, almost 50% of people that are receiving benefits from the government. 49.2% of people, all Americans, are receiving government benefits each month. So that's another thing. Um, in 1985, there were more than 18,000 banks. Now, there, and now, as of 2013, there's 6,891 banks left. So we actually decreased the number of banks by, you know, it's only it's about a third, about a third of the number of banks since 1985. So the big banks swallowed up the little banks. You know, this is where I've been talking about. If you want to go actually bank outside the system, is to use your credit union, and also. You know, look at the troubled asset ratio, too, and, you know, do a little research on the bank itself to see, you know, how their lending policies are, you know, and that they stay afloat and they don't get swallowed up by somebody else. But even if they do, you don't lose all your money. You know, the FDIC takes over and all that type of stuff. But the big banks have been swallowing up the little banks. Um, actually, um, over the six largest banks in the United States, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, and Mitt Stanley, Morgan Stanley, have of the six largest banks, they've grown 37% larger over the past five years, basically since the 2008 crisis. So they got bigger. You know, the bailouts made them bigger. Uh, the U.S. banking system has 14.4 trillion in total assets. The six largest banks now account for two thirds of those assets, and all the other banks account for only one third of those assets. How's that? So they're a hell of a lot bigger than you want to think. And then J.P. Morgan Chase is roughly the size of the entire British economy. J.P. Morgan Chase alone. So, you know, what's going on here? Transfer from the poor to the wealthy, huh? And like I've been saying all along, you know, if you look at the fractional part, a fraction of the 1%, they're, they're connected to the banking system. So that's another reason I tell you, you know, opt out of the banking system. Also, I'm going to comment on some other things on this, too, because I'm going to try to make this quick. I'm not going to hit all these points, but uh, I'm interjecting my own thoughts on this because it's not just the doom and gloom news that's going to help you. you got to keep reality here. And I'm not a doom and gloom pumper or a sky is falling uh, drama pumper for uh, money. I'm trying to tell you, actually, what you're thinking is real. Is real. You know, the news is bad, but it's also your attitude that can make the difference. 
big difference. Uh, right now, the four big two big to fail banks have a total of exposure. This is where they can get slammed. The four two big to the four two biggest two big to fail banks have a total exposure to derivatives in well excess of forty trillion dollars. Our national debt is at seventeen trillion. Their exposure to derivatives is at forty trillion. And eh, it can get screwed. Anyway, the total exposure that Goldman Sachs has to derivative contracts is more than 381 times greater than their total assets. So, see what I'm talking about? You know, it's a, it's a pyramid scheme with these clowns, man. Through the end of November, approximately 365,000 Americans had signed up for Obamacare, but only 4 million, or 4 million, you know, so in other words, about, you know, over 10 times as many had already lost their current health insurance policy because of Obamacare. So you got like one less than one tenth signed up for it, but ten, over 10 times lost their health insurance due to Obamacare, you know, or control care. Let's call it that way. That's what they're about. We're going to care for you and control you. You know, nobody in the actual government or even the most radical Tea Partiers are actually saying this. They have the balls to say it. Obamacare is about total control. That's what it is. Hey, man. You know, I wouldn't even freaking argue with him, man. <laughs> I'd fight him. But anyway, the U.S. government has spent an outstanding $3.7 trillion on welfare programs over the past five years. Now, maybe that's not such a bad thing, but, you know, if it was like welfare going into, let's not call it welfare, if they were spending that kind of money on capital improvements of roadways, dams, infrastructure, tunnels, aquifers, Free energy with windmills or whatever, you know, hydroelectric plants, that would be great. But they don't do it that way. They just give it out, right? Anyway, the 47% of all adults in Americans, uh, only 47% of all adult Americans have a full-time job at this point. So that's telling you the unemployment statistics are actually skewed because what they say is when people drop off the roll, it's like, you know, they don't count them anymore, you know what I mean? The unemployment rate in the Eurozone recently hit, this is the official unemployment rate in the Eurozone, has hit, fit, fit, hit officially a new time high of 12.2%. It's probably more like 25% for all I know. Anyway, um, going over a few of these really quick here. Um, the total consumer credit has risen by a whopping 22% over the last three years. So without the jobs, they have the credit. And you know what? Who's holding the credit, right? The banks. And you know what? If the banks hold some bad credit, guess what happens? The government bails them out, and they, they, they have it, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And they're looking to buy like real hard assets up for a song and a dance. Uh, I'm going to actually interject a couple things after this. Like I said, there's a moral to the story and a couple other things, too, because actually the solution is a lot simpler than you think. Uh, it's not just buying silver, but it's actually productivity and innovation. Uh, at this moment, there are 6 million Americans in a 16 to 24-year-old age group that are neither in school or working. You know, and you think about it, that's usually what the 6 million wind up being in the military when there's a war, right? They're neither working or in school, right? They get drafted, right? That's what happened in Vietnam, right? The inactivity rate for men in the prime working age from 25 to 54 has just hit a brand new all-time record high. You know, it, that's another thing. It is hard to believe that in America today, one out of every 10 jobs is filled by a temp agency. So that's another thing. So the unemployment is great, you know. That's what they're going to tell you. That's what Ben Bernanke is going to tell you, but it's not true. Investors pulled out an astounding Investors, in other words, you want people to put in their money in their 401ks and have their mutual funds. They pulled out an astounding $72 billion out of bond mutual funds in 2013 alone. That's the worst year for bond funds ever. Eh, they're getting out of bonds, man. That's cool. Anyway, the six heirs to Walmart, where, every, where America shops all the, all the time, the six heirs to Walmart, you know, Walmart family, founder Walmart, Sam Wal Walton, have as much wealth as the bottom one-third of all Americans combined. How's that? Support them. <laughs> Woo, man. Yeah, buy, buy, made giant Walmart stuff. Back in 1967, you know, this is another thing. Back in 1967, the U.S. military had more than 31,000 strategic nuclear warheads. That number has been cut down to 15, 1,550, and now Barack Obama wants to reduce it to only 1,000. And I can tell you, inside information, Russia has 
Way more than we ever had. We're going to get clobbered, man. The number of Americans on food stamps has grown from 17 million in the year 2000 to more than 47 million today. So three times in 13 years. So right now, one out of every five households in the United States is on food stamps, 20%, right? The U.S. economy loses approximately 9,000 jobs for every 1 billion of goods that are imported from overseas. And you know, they're imported loads of goods from overseas. Back in 1970, the total amount of debt in the United States, now you were talking government debt, business debt, and consumer debt, was back in 1970. That's all debt. You know, every debt there is was less than $2 trillion. Today, it is over $56 trillion. So, therefore, it went up uh, 28 times, right? Is that, not, is that right? 28 times it went up. All debt. That's a good number to look at because it's telling you all debt. Now, if you think the situation is better here in the United States than in Europe, and I mentioned some things about Europe. Now, per capita, per capita, the U.S. Has actually has more government debt per person, per capita, than either Greece, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, or Spain. So we got actually worse situations. So I don't know how the hell it's staying afloat, man, to tell you the truth. Japan also has a GDP ratio of, you know, gross domestic product ratio of more than 211%, which is the debt is actually over twice as high as the whole GDP, right? That's And they're embarked on super QE. And the whole thing's going to blow up, man. 53% of all Americans do not have a three-day supply of non-perishable food. Over half Americans do not have a three-day supply of non-perishable food and water in their homes. Uh -uh. Talk about problems. Anyway, potential problems. Anyway, according to a recent Pew Research survey, only 19% of all Americans trust go government, less than one-fifth. Back in 58, about three-quarters of Americans trusted the government. Back in 1958 when Eisenhower was president, you know, five-star former five-star General Eisenhower. So anyway, I want to actually say this, um, you know, here's a, here's a moral to the story. There was this old guy, he had a hot dog stand by the railroad station, and uh, every time the railroad station would stop, you know, trains would stop, the workers would get off, he'd be like, hey, get your hot dogs, get your hot dogs, get your hot dogs, right? And he'd be selling hot dogs. This was during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Well, he was like, you know, a hot dog salesman. He was like thinking, hey, I want to have my son go to college. So he had his son go to college, and his son was off to college, right? And he's thinking, yeah, I want my son to actually have a better life than me, but, you know, I'm doing okay. And business is actually doing okay, so he's actually going to be buying more ovens. He's buying more things to store the buns in because, actually, production's going up. So every day he goes out there, hey, get your hot dogs, get your hot dogs, get your hot dogs, and, and they sell. So his son comes back from college. He's freaking finished with college. And then he comes back and sees his dad. He goes, hey, Dad, what are you doing with this business here? You know, don't you realize that we have a depression going on? He goes, really? Really? He goes, yeah, look at the papers. See, it's all depression, depression. Hey, there's depression going on, right? And, you know, the guy goes, well, yeah, I guess you're right. The papers say that. And it wasn't even, I was too busy to read the papers. You know, I was too busy working, right? And, uh... You know, so he goes, yeah, my son was went to college. He must know these things. So he, you know what he does? He realizes, A, there's a depression going on. He stops. You know, he, he cancels his orders for the extra bun, uh, ovens. He cancels his other orders for the extra holders for the hot dog buns. And he stops going out there saying, hey, mister, get your hot dog. And he, sure enough, his business goes down. And then, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, I guess my son was right. There is a depression because my business is going down. You see, the whole problem is right there. When you think there's a problem, and you make you make you can make a self-fulfilling prophecy too. You see, that's why I don't like these doom and gloomers on YouTube too much. You know, they're always pushing doom and gloom. I mean, I push reality. You know, I mean, I know there's reality behind the scenes where, hey, you know, there's stuff going on. The big guys are freaking scoffing up more, and they're trying to squeeze all the little guys. You know. And so, you know, I'm out for you guys, man. I'm out for the little guys. And I know enough about the big guys to know enough. You know, we'll say suffice to say that. But let me put it to you this way. You know, your attitude is everything. You can innovate. And, you know, I'm going to actually say this. You know, you know, I pointed to a link a bunch of times on about how fiat currencies, local fiat currencies, 
worked in Austria. Not I'm not talking about the Austrian School of Economics. Don't confuse it with that. I'm talking about during the Great Depression in the country of Austria, they did an experiment in some local economies with local fiat currencies, paper script, right? And they, they got they didn't they didn't even have to issue anywhere near as much as they thought they had to because once it got into the hands of productive people, guess what happened? The economy went like freaking wildfire, and the money was flowing around left and right. Like for instance, you know, say we got you know a group of ten people, once a hardcore freaking you know cracker jack mechanic, you know, one knows how to do body work on cars, one knows how to do plumbing, one knows how to do roofing, one knows how to do framing. And you got these 10 people, right? You know, they can make their own currency within that 10 group and exchange between each other. You know, but you might have to have a larger group than that. <clears throat> but that would be like QE working towards the productive class. You see? You see what I mean? If they agree upon that's money, that can actually work. Because, you know, these numbers don't mean shit in a lot of ways, you know? That was one reason I always liked being in the accounting construction field because I had a lot of common sense on what was going on in construction too. You know, I realized, you know, you know, well, I don't want to get into too much on that because I get on a d diverge on something else. But hey, you know, the, stu the situation is a lot worse than Ben Bernanke's painting it. They're going to strike taper. And you know, this QE, none of it's going into the freaking hands of the middle class productive people in the real economy anyway. It's just going into the banks. It's going into the top guys. So they can try to buy in it while while there's actually deflation going on in the real economy where this productive class, there's actually, you know, cash being pushed into the coffers of the largest banks. That's all QE is. So you know the way to starve the beast basically is to opt out of the system. And you know, not that I'm gonna say this again, man, maybe this can be unpopular, but Bitcoins, Litecoins, Quark coins, world coins, that ain't the way to opt out of the system, man. That ain't the way to do it. Forget about that crap. You know, you'd be better off making some kind of like currency between, you know, a fifteen or dozen pr plumbers and electricians and uh, framers and th people that do stuff for real. And you know, it could be an accountant because you know you gotta freaking file your taxes and shit. But you know, it could be that that type of stuff versus you know, uh, getting into that kind of stuff and thinking you're independent. I think that's all the setup. And, you know, actually, I know it crashed today because the Chinese government, they all crashed. But anyway, your attitude means a lot, you know. First off, the situation's bad, the situation's grim, right? The situation is, you know, the big guys are trying to hammer everybody else, the middle class and everybody else, and they're trying to push them down, right? That's the situation. But... If you're freaking like, oh, you know, having a freaking drama f attack every day, the sky's falling, you're not going to go ahead with a positive attitude and take action that are necessary. So, therefore, you know, forge ahead, forge ahead. You know, whatever the hell you're doing out there in uh, YouTube land or whatever the hell your activity is, just make sure you freaking uh, work hard at your whatever your job is, too. And, you know, provide the best service to other, to other people because, you know, part of the problem with the American domestic economy is that the American workers got a little lax too, you know? It used to be like, hey, you do the job right or you don't do it at all, you know? It's like that extra attention to detail. That's what made the difference, you know? That's what made the difference. So, uh, you know, to do that actually will actually keep a lot more of the economic activity domestically and actually spur on the economy. But, to fight these jackasses on the top and these big banks and these big companies and stuff like that, the best thing to do is opt out of the system as much as possible. And, you know, part of that re part of that answer is silver. But, you know, like the other statistic in here, 53% of all Americans do not have a three-day supply of non-perishable food. You better be opting for that before you ever even buy one ounce of silver. Get yourself a lot of extra food. And, uh, you know, just in case, you never know.